Hey everyone, TJB Chris here. It's the fourth and final part in my Septandy series, TJB Chris's Tandy Education Connection, where I've been focusing on the educational offerings among Tandy Radio Shack computers, particularly the early 1980s and the TRS-80 era. Tonight I'm going to be focusing on something a little less technically fun, but also very important and relevant, as we're focusing on the software tonight. Why have a network where you can distribute classroom software around a classroom if you don't know what kind of software you're distributing over it? And tonight we're going to talk about some software for the TRS-80 Model 3 and 1 and 3 line, which we're going to demonstrate on the 3 here. We're actually going to use the Network 3 to run that software because some of it actually does make use of the Network 3 a little bit. And then we're going to bring in a special guest, my Color Computer 2, running some educational software for children. The Color Computer was used in the classroom back in the day, you'll know from my previous videos that the original color computer was actually compatible with the Network 2 here. However, even after the color computer's time passed in the classroom, it was still very much offered as an educational tool to parents, and a lot of educational software came with instructions and guides for parents in terms of working with their children with the software and what they should expect with it. So, with that in mind, we're going to take a look at a handful of software on both the TRS-80 Model 1-3 line of systems and on the color computer. We're not going to go into depth. There's a lot of different kind of educational software, a lot of genres out there. I can't possibly cover them all. What I really want to kind of give you an idea of is just a slight scratching of the surface for what was available and the kind of software that Radio Shack was pushing, especially in the educational era in the 1980s. So let's get right to it. Our first stop is going to be the TRS-80 Model 3. So, here we are at the Model 3, Radio Shack Computer Assisted Instruction 3rd Grade Part 1. I guess this is not just all of 3rd Grade Part 1, it is in fact just 3rd Grade Math Part 1. And this program is a little interesting in that you'll see it makes use of the disk-based functionality that Network 3 provides. So this program requires either a disk system or a Network 3. Let's enter today's date. It doesn't care about the years. Now we have two main modes here. We have a skills building lesson where it can actually try to teach us some math skills for the third grade level. And keep in mind this is third grade level in 1980 something. I don't know how that compares to math today. Other than to say it's not that controversial type of math they're teaching in the schools nowadays, I guess. I don't know, I just heard it's controversial. I don't have kids. Anyway, or you can test and we'll get into how those look. So let's do some skills building lessons. I will have five problems. I don't care about the number of minutes. Okay, so let's do my name. I'm just going to call myself Chris for this one. <clears throat> and you can't see it, but we're loading off from the host. There we go. Let's start with lesson one. Okay, so this is an example, and it's going to teach us how to do it. We have 67 plus 15, so we have 7, and that's 12. Okay, so now we're going to have seven tens, a ten, and two ones. It's interesting that it breaks it out that way. That will confuse the hell out of me, which gives us eight tens, two ones. So it has us break in down by tens and ones, and then we answer the question, which is going to be obviously 82. <clears throat> and the great thing is, like this one is showing, it even shows you that you carry the one, 82. So as reinforcement for a lesson already shown in class, here we go. So now we should have four tens and 17 ones. I'm going to try and preempt it here, see if I'm going to do well at this. So we're going to have four tens plus another 10 plus seven ones. So we're going to have five tens and seven ones. So now I do the five. 7, and up here it'll show us. We'll have the 7, carry the 1, and we have the 5, and now the answer is 57. <clears throat> the interesting thing is it has you type it backwards. That's going to confound the heck right out of me. Cool. All right, so it gave me 2. Do I get it? Oh, it's my turn now. Okay, so we have 5 tens, and we have 13 ones, which means now we have 5 tens here, plus another 10 there, plus three ones there. Now we have six tens and three ones. Now, the answer is 63. So now I have 
3. To get the 6, I have to carry the 1, and I have a 6. And that's problem 1. Yay! <clears throat> oh, I get a happy face. Cool. All right. Well, that's motivating. All right. Well, we have six tens. I think it's going to make. Okay. Let's do this. Let's do the first one correctly. Five, sixteen. Okay. So let's say I mis misinterpreted this and I said we had six tens. No. Okay. Well, I'm just going to guess wrong again. The four tens. Oh, nope, it shows us five tens. Interesting. Okay, so now I type five. Now I have a ten, and then it's like, oh, I get it. Okay, so now I have six tens and six ones. So the answer is 66. And we carry the one, and we have the six. Third grade math was never so interesting. Seems a little repetitive, but I guess when you're trying to reinforce the notion of bringing it all together and, and kind of simplifying it, that's what it takes. Are we happy? We are happy. Naturally. Okay, here we go. So I worked five problems. I get a nice little report at the end, like a little report card. And I worked five. I got one right in three plus tries. See what happened. You got them wrong. I got four right in one try. 1 1.3 second average response. Enter code to continue. You'll see this theme later, but the division, there's a division portion of this math thing, and we'll try one more lesson here to show you the difference in how this works. But this code to continue thing is, is kind of a theme in Radio Shack math software, and I happen to know that it is RT. Now, if I type my old name in, I'm going to end up right back where I was. So I'm going to go with not Chris, and I'm going to pick a different lesson. We're going to do lesson 16. Oh my. Okay. Well, that was pretty easy. Okay. 122. Oh, I see. So this is multiplication by ones, or essentially type whatever number isn't one. Happy face. I'm going to assume that until it throws me like 763 times 4. Okay. Let's type it wrong. See what we get on. 5, 4, let's say it was 54, 69. Let's say I just for some reason can't type. Apparently not right. Five, four, seven, nine. And there we go. Skills building lesson 16. I got three problems. One right on two tries, two right on one try. Let's enter the code to continue. So now, if I want to see how the students did, I can RX to leave the program. I can run it again. I think it's correct to RP. Yep, please wait. And you can't see it, but the host is loading over here. And this actually dumps out to another basic program that will show me a skills report for all of my students. Here we go. So I've done, I did some back on the 22nd playing around with it. And that was actually the first attempt at filming this. And then just, I decided it was going badly, so I moved on. And then we have TJB Chris tonight, then we have Chris, and then we have Not Chris. And Chris is obviously the dunce of the group. Not Chris is a little better, but TJB Chris naturally stand out. Uh, I do not want to print this report on the printer. And I'll press enter to continue, and it's going to dump me right back into third grade math. I don't know if there are other codes to this. I don't have the documentation to the game. But this is pretty much what the math programs are like. And there's a division counterpart that's almost exactly like this, which we're not going to cover. But that leads us right into our next program, so join me over on the Color Computer 2. And here we are at the Color Computer 2, and we have a program that's going to look a little bit like Deja Vu from the Model 3, because we have Radio Shack Computer Assisted Instruction, but this time it's Color Math, so they were a little more specific. And I actually had this game uh, growing up. It was one of the pieces of software my parents bought me with the Color Computer when they got it for us for Christmas when I started begging for computers, and this is the original manual I had for my color math program. I have the tape someplace, but I couldn't dig it up for this video. Um, but the math, the manual is actually pretty good. You know, it's got some introductory stuff as, as is expected, and function keys. There's those same codes that you'll recognize from the Model 3, RT and RX. And we have their uh, 
letters that show up on the screen when letters should be carried, so you can borrow or carry as needed. And then there's the usual, here's how we do this, and we'll actually get into using the program. There are also some subtraction and, and addition multiplication mastery levels. There are two sets of programs on color math. Oh, and one more thing, sorry. There's also a, a way, or uh, a, a little ledger in the back of the book to keep track of your scores. And I apparently was studious enough to try and fill it in. There's Chris's handwriting from back when he was um, a kid idiot version of himself. Color Math came on cassette. There were two sides to the cassette. One had addition and subtraction, which is the program we have now. The other was multiplication and division, which was simply loaded by flipping the cassette. And this was C load M from the cassette. In this case, I have it on my Coco SDC here, so we're taking the easy route. Let's take a look at how this goes. And we're just going to do one of the lessons and kind of work through. So here we go. Maximum problems, five. You can see the, the similarities. Now, this one's a little different in that it's grown a bit. Um, you can do placement, you can do lessons, test, and change maximum problems. Placement's neat because it'll try and place you. So I have five maximum problems. We're going to actually change that to three maximum problems. So I'm not here all night. And we're going to say, I'll just do B lessons. And my name is going to be TJB Chris. Now, I don't think it's going to let me do much to save this, so here we go. We're going to do lesson, I'm taking a guess here. Let's go 13. I don't know what they are. So this program is a little different in that you enter the numbers backwards. So 5 plus 4 is 9, and 4 plus nothing is 4. Hey, we get a happy face. And this time, I don't know if you heard it, we get a beep. Let me crank that up a little bit so you get a... Okay, so now we have... I'll get the next one wrong. We have 4 and 3. Ooh, and it's even a different color. Beep! And it's animated. Woohoo! All right, this one we're going to get wrong and see what it does. We're going to say 9 and 4 because wrong. Okay, same kind of thing. Block it out. 8, 4. Now you get the boop, but you don't get the happy face, just like the other one. You only get the happy face if you're really smart and do it right the first time. All right, well, let's take a look and see what the test looks like. We'll see what's different with the test. And then we're going to try a higher lesson and see if the behavior of the program changes. You have to hit enter. And I again, I'm TJB Chris. And now we're going to do lesson 20. All right, that is 884. Now I wonder if it's going to make me carry or if we haven't gotten to the part. Apparently not. One. Five. Typing these backwards is messing my head up. You'll notice it's not giving me any feedback. And I'll shut my mouth this time. When I finish typing, it's not going to make any sound. So here we go. It just moves right on to the next thing. And the whole idea is this is a test. It doesn't tell you whether you're right or wrong. It doesn't give you any feedback at all. All it does is captures your answer. And when you get to the end, it tells you whether or not you succeeded in, with your test. So let's do this. Let's go back to addition. And we'll just do three problems. And this time I want to do lessons, but I want to do a higher number lesson. Let's do lesson 40. Oh, we just have more, but it doesn't look like we're carrying yet. So let's see what we get. Zero, eight, and that is eight, and that is six. OK, I just get the beep, but I just get the word correct. So apparently. When you're advanced enough, you're apparently not you're not um, young enough for the happy face. I don't know. You don't need it. I don't know. I'm a grown-up, and I like happy faces. Seven, five, and seven. Boop. Is that less correct because the beep was lower? Let's get one wrong. Zero, zero, zero is one. And this is going to be six, and this is going to be seven, and this is going to be seven. And zero, six. Seven, seven. Oh, I'm dumbass. Eighty-seven, sixty. Because I can't add. So that's what happens when you get them wrong too many times. It does that, and it actually would it give me the answer? Really? Six, seven, eight. Oh, interesting. So it shows you the correct answer if you get it wrong. Um, so I guess I like that it says three plus. So if you're a real dunce and keep getting it wrong, it's not going to do that. It's not going to, you know, just 
17 wrong because he couldn't read the answer that the computer was giving him the whole time. So I think that's going to do it for color math. This is actually a pretty standard offering for math drill type programs that you tended to see in these CAI type programs of the 1980s. And some were more graphical than others, but color math and the Model 3 equivalent third grade math are really pretty good representations of, of what you'd get. And I mean, quite frankly, if I got to play with a computer, I'd be happy I was doing that. But I would also be like, Ugh, this seems like such a waste of a computer when I was a kid. And that's just because I would want to do other things on it. But it's still actually pretty decent programs. Um, interesting little fact, this program is assembly language. The Model 3 version, third grade math, is actually written in BASIC. So I'm not sure why that is, but that is in fact a thing. All right, let's move back over to the Model 3 for another program. Back at the Model 3, next we're looking at Radio Shack Chemistry Lab Volume 1, Kinetic Energy. The kinetic theory describes the relationship between the temperature and the pressure of an ideal gas held at a constant volume. I like, I, what is an ideal gas? I'm guessing it's not the kind of gas I'm most famous for. Regardless, let's see what we have here. You will be controlling a laboratory simulation which will allow you to investigate the kinetic theory. Press enter to continue. The experimental apparatus will allow you to observe the relationship between the temperature and the pressure of an ideal gas held at a constant volume. There are two sections to the experiment. One, you will place a known quantity of gas into a cylinder. How will you get that gas into the cylinder, one wonders. Anyway, you will vary the temperature of the gas while observing the corresponding change in the pressure of the gas. <clears throat> and here we are. So part one, introduce a known quantity of gas into the cylinder. And this is a little simulation. So up arrow increases, down arrow decreases. All right, let's say I ate beans and have a rather large quantity of gas. 15 moles sounds about right. And this does use moles for the gas volume. OK, here we go. And what we apparently have here is a heat source. So let me use the arrows. Oh, yep, OK, so I didn't see it. Over here, the thing was already maxed out. So if I go down with the scale, I mean, other than the animation changing, the size of the thing at the bottom doesn't change. But what I get here is at 330 Kelvin, take note not to say degrees there, because that's not quite right. At 330 Kelvin, we're looking at 40.59. I assume that's atmospheres. OK, let's store the data point and press S to do that. And then we move up. Let's go to 350 moles. I'm sorry, 350 Kelvin. It's always 15 moles, you dummy. It's Kelvin, it's the temperature. OK, 90. And let's just go off scale high at 400. OK, so I've stored a bunch of data points. And now we're going to press Enter to see the data. And there's my data. And so now we have 15 moles of gas at 400 Kelvin is 49.21. And all the way down to 330, it's 40.59. So you get an almost 25% increase in the, uh, the kinetic energy as expressed by the pressure by increasing the temperature from 330 to 400 degrees. And since temperatures are logarithmic, I was just saying a percentage going in the degrees because it doesn't work that way. Press Enter. OK. Oh, and it's even going to be nice enough to graph it for us. So I can push the back arrow to see the table, or I can press L to run another lab. And just in case you didn't remember, there's the table, and there's the representation of that table graphically, which is a fair representation. I mean, I can tell you I probably have atmospheres of gas pressure sometimes, and I don't have to have a lab to do it. And we'll press Enter to start over. And now it starts off again, the copyright screen, all rights reserved, license to Tandy Corporation, and we're just going to flip right to the next screen. And then it tells us about the kinetic theory. Now, an interesting thing about this program, and I mentioned it in the one of my other videos, the break key is disabled. I don't even know if there's a way to get out of this. Um, actually, let's see. Can I shift break? Yeah, I don't know that there's a way out of this. And I, this, this software was not designed for a disk system. It doesn't interact. So my suspicion here is that once you enter this program, you're probably stuck. Maybe not, but I don't have the documentation for it. So what I'm going to do is reload the network. And while we're reloading the network, I'm going to see you back over at the color computer. And next up is TRS-80 Color Logo. 
Now, color logo, you could argue, is a or logo is a programming language, and while that is true, it was developed specifically for children and teaching children computers and programming. So, it does it in a fun and graphical way, and it is a great language to play with, but it's not really anything you're going to do anything meaningful with. But it does teach some basic procedural thinking and gets children accustomed to working with a computer and getting it to commanding it to do something. So, let's go into the R prompt and we're going to draw with our turtle here. The turtle's little dude in the front of the screen. In this case, he looks like he's one of the little little PT boats out of the game Battleship. I almost want to sink him. And this is fairly simple to do. You forward 90. Ooh, wow, I wrapped off the bottom of the screen there. And we're just going to write. I want to see what this looks like now. Let's make a square here. Actually, let's do this. Forward 45. Oh, it was just off the top. So the bottom of the turtle was up, but he didn't actually draw there. Oops. Um, you can abbreviate. Oh. I'm an idiot. Okay. You can abbreviate the commands here if you want. Um, so, for example, forward can become FD45. And then you can lift the turtle up, pen up, pen down, whatever you want. So the very basics of this are you can draw around on the screen. I can go, you know, left 30, LT, sorry, 30, and then forward 80. The very basics of this are you can kind of draw on the screen, learn how to do it. But what you can do with this is you can combine commands into procedures to do repetition and patterns and all that other kind of stuff. And Logo could do other things too. But this is kind of where the main focus was for Logo. And again, I'm not going to get into all of what Logo is and this and that and the other thing. The whole idea here was just to show the color computer implementation of it. So let's do this. Let's go and put in a procedure. And by the way, you can show and hide the turtle too. All right, let's try and type in a procedure. So the example the manual uses is to create a rectangle. And that's what we're going to do. So this version of Logo has a separate editing mode for procedures. I'm not sure if they all do or if this is a color logo thing, but I just pressed the E key to go into editor mode. And I'm going to suit two rectangle. And now I'm going to type the commands. So we're going to go forward 50. We're going to go right 90. We're going to go forward 30. We're going to go right 90. And then we're going to go forward 50. And then we're going to go right 90 and forward 30. And then I can type end to end it. Now I have my new line. So I'm going to press the break key and I'm going to go to R for runtime. Let's see what happens if I type rectangle. There we go, we have a rectangle. All right, I'm going to try one more thing with the procedures. We're going to go E to edit mode. Okay, see so I have my rectangle here. I assume that I don't want to. Can I do more than one? Let's find out. Okay. I want to um, repeat, I'm going to do this repeat 20, actually we'll repeat 10, rectangle, and then I'm going to go right 45, I don't think I need to repeat it 10, and I'm going to end, okay, if I go to R mode and type spinner, hey cool. Neat. Okay, that did do what I was hoping it would do. So I was able to use my rectangles and now combine them into, I should have called it pinwheel or something, but whatever, and basically turn them into a pinwheel. I could have done a couple of less rotations on it, but you get the idea. So that's basically the kind of procedural thinking and loop thinking that Logo starts to introduce you to. And there were some other things you could do with it too. But again, this is really just a little bit of a demo of what TRS-80 Color Logo on the color computer looks like. It's worth noting that this is one of those programs that actually came with a guide for parents to talk about how you know their kids could inter interact with Logo and things like that. And of course, the owner's manual for Logo itself talks about the fact that things that are most fun for kids are also fascinating and fun for adults too. That's a, a paraphrase. And there are things like variable support and other things like that. So you could give it a variable for how long you wanted the rectangle side to be, for example, and feed that in when you call it when you call the rectangle. And there are color sets too. Let's see what happens actually if I change the color set. Oh, black and white. 
I don't know that there are more than two on this. Let's do, oh, let's see though. I'll have it to come back. Oh. Okay. Ah, the pen's the same color. So now what I have to do is change the pen color. Oops. I want to do PC for pen color and type the space. Now let's try. Nope, so the pen color is already zero. PC one. There we go. Cool, so you get a neat little mix of colors available in the palette that you have, and then you get to choose from two different palettes. So if I do color set one, now that's a nice blue color. Ooh, I actually kind of like that. So you get a little bit of color control over the color set and over kind of how everything looks. Overall, it's a pretty nice implementation of logo. I'm not, I've never used, I think I used the Apple II one once, but I've never used a lot of logo. Uh, my school wasn't really big into logo and we didn't have it at home growing up. And you can, save your logo files. So, you know, Color Logo does let you save and load from cassette. I think there was a version of this um, that could work with a disk system. So you could save and load from disk. Maybe if you had a multi-pack, the cartridge would do it, but I don't know. Um, but you could do save and load your programs from cassette, so all was not lost. But that's just a quick look at TRS-80 Color Logo. Let's move back to the Model 3 for one more Model 3 program. And here we are with a program that's going to look rather familiar, but is actually going to be a different program. And this is the Radio Shack Chemistry Lab Volume 1, but this is Boyle's Law. And Boyle's Law describes the relationship between the pressure and the volume of an ideal gas held at a constant temperature. So instead of talking about the kinetic energy of the gas, now we're going to talk about the volume of the gas and the pressure um, when they're held at a constant temperature. So here we go. We'll be controlling a laboratory simulation, which will allow you to investigate Boyle's law. The experimental apparatus, love that word, will allow you to observe the relationship between the pressure and the volume of an ideal gas held at a constant temperature, again with the ideal gas. There are two sections to the experiment. First, I will place a known quantity of gas into a cylinder. Sounds pretty familiar. And then I'll vary the pressure of the gas while looking at the corresponding volume changes. So here we go. Let's say we didn't have beans for dinner, so we've only got seven moles of gas, which does make relief port kind of fitting. Um, that's relieving. So I guess this is me eating the beans, and this is me expelling it. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's enough of that. See, that's the kind of stuff I would do in school, and I'm doing it now as a grown-up, too. Okay, here we go. So we have nine moles of gas, which at this pressure, one atmosphere, equates to 295.2 liters. So let us take a data point. We'll hit S to save again. And you can see, oh wow, this is gonna really compress. I mean, this is a good ideal gas. And this does what a good gas does and compresses. The question is, can it go any lower? Yes, it can. So now I can see as I lower the pressure, the volume of the gas varies. That's reinforcing. All right, so we have a bunch of data points set. Here at two atmospheres, we're looking at 147.6. So let's press enter to look at a tabular view of our data. And there we are, we have a data table with nine moles of bean-driven gas. And we've got our various pressures and where I chose to take data points. And I can, of course, go back or I can press enter to continue. And then I can press enter to continue again. <clears throat> and now we're plotting out our points. This is essentially the same program or the same engine, I guess. And this is kind of one of those things that was common in educational software. You would develop an engine like the color math engine and reuse it. Um, or even you know different versions of the same thing, and then you could feed it different problems and different types of applications for different machines, or different versions of it, addition, subtraction on color math, or the division versus the third grade math one here on the Model 3, and kind of reuse that software and get the most benefit out of it. And that's not to say these aren't knocking these programs. I mean, keep in mind, this is 1982 here, or earlier. This program probably came out a little earlier than that. Um, the Network 3 I'm running it on came out in 82. But 
This is very common for courseware and drill type software that was available in the 1980s. And Radio Shack made a lot of it. And there were other programs too. I just haven't gotten my hands on them. So, you know, if I do this might be something I play with a little bit. Whether I revisit it on the channel, I don't know. I don't know how much people are really interested in the software angle of this. But I do like showing the computers running what they would have run. And in an educational environment, these are the kinds of programs they would have run. And let's head back to the Color Computer 2 for one more program. And this one's a little bit different. And this is going to target a younger age group. And this one actually is more focused for education at home and parents than it is for use in schools. And you'll see when, when we get to that program why that is. Let's take a look. Our final program is Ernie's Magic Shapes by CCW. We'll talk about that. Abracadabra, Ernie's here. Poof, his magic shapes appear. Match the shapes and colors, too, and choose the game that's right for you. And that goes fast enough that you're not going to get through it. Ernie's Magic Shapes was actually by the computer division, or whatever they kind of called, the computer software portion of the Children's Television Workshop, or CTW. For those of you as old as I am or older, you probably remember that CTW was the was the entity behind Sesame Street and properties like it back in the day. And in fact, the CTW letters were in the top, that little arch on the Sesame Street sign, rather than I think it's the numbers one, two, three today. So for people like me, that's a bit of an abomination as a, as a Sesame Street kid. But anyway, many programs, bits of computer software were made available with different characters from the Sesame Street realm, and this is one of them. And a lot of them are the same. These are targeted at the Sesame Street age demographic, of course. So let's take a look at just a couple of these games. They're fairly simple, but again, you have to remember we're talking about very small children here. And for those of you who are freaking out about small children and scream time, this is back before the scream was vying for your attention and trying to manipulate you. The color computer isn't going to pop up a notification from the Model 3 over here to come over and play third grade math. So. It's just a single task, focus, attention-based machine, not a, hey, look over here, look over here, but also don't forget that thing you were doing kind of apparatus. So yes, still screen time was an issue for small children then, but we didn't have the kind of attention-grabbing, crack-like screen experiences that we have today where we are trying to manipulate people into interacting with the game endlessly through notifications and pop-ups and Look what your friends are doing that makes you less cool than them and all that other stuff. Okay, commentary over. Let's play Presto Shapo. We'll match the shapes. And the great thing is, as I type each of these numbers, how to play, match the shapes. Actually, let's do the instructions. How to play. Ernie has given us a shape and a color. This is the wrong color. Press down. This is the wrong shape. Press down. Now this is where you're going to have to have a parent reading it in all likelihood. This is the right shape and color. Press up. And so you could be working with your child and have the kid press up. And matching it gets you a little bunny rabbit. All right, so let's play Presto Shapo. Um, we want. I wonder what zip zap the shapes is. Let me try that one. All right, presto shapo. Orange triangle. Hope that one matches. Up. Give me my bunny. Sweet. Nope. Yep. See what happens if I guess one wrong. So the interesting thing is, well, I want to see what happens if I get them wrong. But what happens if I pick the wrong one? OK. Hmm. OK, they're all right. OK, well, we know it's right. So what happens if I press down? He's going to blast it. OK, now that one is wrong. What happens if I go? up with it. So I guess I actually have to hit down for it. Yep, OK. Ah, that's the right one. Up. Sweet. Now I 
think. I don't think that matches. So I'll match this one, yep. And we'll see if we can get back to the menu. I think it's either break or clear. But first the bunny. All right, I just hit clear. Yep, he's gonna nuke it. Ernie's the best. Hey, Bert. What you doing there, Bert? Uh, let's zip zap the shapes. More shape matching. Okay. Pop, pop for the colors. More color matching. Harder shape matches. Hardest of all. Okay, let's try this. Oh, my. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to pick the ones that go there. Well, I don't think you do. You do. Now here's the question. Is it going to make me do three of those hexagonal wheels? Nope. Or is it going to just take one and blurp it across the screen? Okay, there's one. Let's see what it does. Just like watching Sesame Street back in the day, this is more engaging than it should be for a grown-up. just because I want my damn rabbit. But this is actually a pretty good shape and color matching game, so. I have a pretty good representation of Ernie given the color palette of the color computer. So, I mean, really, it's it's a pretty, a pretty interesting game. And there were others. Uh, Cookie Monster has one. Uh, Grover has one. I want to say Big Bird has one. So there are a bunch of CTW slash CCW, Children's Computer Workshop, oh wow, uh, programs out there. And that is one of these. And there's my bunny rabbit. Yay! All right, let's see if I hit clear now. Oh, nope. Okay, he needs to get a part out. Clear. I don't know if that's a truck or a dog, but still. And that's Ernie's Magic Shapes. And that's going to do it for my SEP Tandy series for 2023, TJB Chris's Tandy Education Connection. And for this video, part four, this is sadly going to be the last part in the series. I was hoping to get into one more part with a little more technical deep dive, particularly on the Network 3, but I'm just not going to be able to get to it this month. Things did not work out that way. I did spend a little bit of time with it over the weekend when I had some time to play with it. And if I'm feeling generous and it came out well enough, maybe I'll share some of that bonus footage with you. But for the most part, I think I'll just save that deep dive for another time. I'm not done with Network 3. I'm really enjoying playing with it. And I really think that we could have some fun exploring it and seeing what else it's capable of. So, so we're not done with Network 3, but I am going to move on to a few other projects in the immediate term, just because I've been putting some other things off for this. But I hope I've done a pretty good job of covering Tandy's educational offerings for the TRS-80 era hardware, software for both the Model 134 systems and for the color computer a little bit here. Though the color computer wasn't as prominent in the educational scene in the 1980s, there were offerings directly related to it for education targeted at teachers, and the machines were in the classrooms, especially in the Network 2 era. And they were really more focused for home and the educational front, but there was a lot of stuff there too. and I just couldn't possibly cover it all. So that's going to do it. Thank you for joining me. I'm TJB Chris. Join me next time. When I don't know what kind of Tandy shenanigans I'll be up to, but they will be fun and interesting. Thanks for watching.